what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology and today as promised is the video on mars saturn conjunction which is happening in the sky right now in the sign of sagittarius yes the divine sign of jupiter's multicorn yes so there are so many things which are happening so we'll discuss what this conjunction is doing or what it is going to do or how things can unfold or how is it going to affect us in our lives okay so if you're new to the channel and you have still not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you like this video click the thumbs up at the end and share it with those who are interested in knowing about the mars Saturn dangerous conjunction <laughs> all right and before i begin and today i must say because the video is on mars and saturn that god is there with you all the time just look to him and he will protect you from the sign of Sagittarius <laughs> okay and uh, before I speak on this conjunction uh, I would like to say some words about uh, the videos which James Bahasa uh, which I had uploaded so I uploaded the first two videos and I am very happy with the overwhelming response and I have sent uh, the links to James sir also so uh, the video which I uploaded yesterday the part two that has got thousand views till now <laughs> It's amazing to see that in one day, thousand people have seen that video. It's amazing, amazing, amazing. So thank you to everybody, whoever has watched that video. And the third and the fourth part I'll be uploading in the coming weekend. Okay, so that because many people say that, oh, in the weekdays, we don't get time to see the long video. So why not upload it in the weekends? Okay, so I'll be uploading it in the weekends. All right. And I hope you had a great Ram Naomi festival yesterday. I hope that you could understand how Lord Ram was such an exemplary figure and I hope you did things to imbibe his life story and his principles in our lives, all right? So today, now the video is on Mars and Saturn. See, what is Mars? What is Saturn? We all know, but <laughs> when Mars and Saturn are conjunct in the sky, it is like saying you are pressing, you are pressing the accelerator of the car which is mars yes mars represents those things initiatives going ahead going forward in life and saturn represents brakes slow down hold on hang on it's not time yet <laughs> so it's like saying we press the accelerator and the brake simultaneously so then what happens there's a lot of friction the car is suffering right so whichever house mars and saturn are conjunct if it's conjunct in your birth chart suppose then this will give you some problem in that house yes problem doesn't mean bad but it will give you some sort of a struggle yes now that can ultimately result in something good or bad that is a separate topic struggle doesn't mean it has to be bad but the element of struggle will be there that cannot be denied okay so if you see some videos in youtube which says oh mars saturn is a beautiful conjunction oh, it's great to have this in kali yuga just like they have fantasized this jupiter rahu conjunction well, I'm sorry, I do not uh, identify with that, yes. As Vigdi Kar also said in his uh, uh, interview which he gave to me that uh, Mars Saturn is not a very great conjunction to have. But now, this does not mean that this will al always harm it, yes. So, for example, suppose if this conjunction is happening in somebody's ninth house, then there can be a lot of struggle in finding the right guru or a lot of struggle in finding the right spiritual path. Then, But the, but the good thing is, once they figure it then they're like yes we have figured it out it is not like that rahu type of people yes oh today we like this guru today we like that guru today this guru said this tomorrow that guru said that yes we will only go to gurus uh, who tell what we want to hear right if the guru says have sex with whomever you want that's fine then we will go them we'll go to them because we like to hear that right or the guru says you can do whatever you want drink smoke which we like to do so we will go to that guru or whatever the guru says what we like to hear so they are not these kind of people so now that can initially be a bit of struggle for the ninth or similarly for areas like marriage if mars and saturn are conjunct in the seventh house then this can yield some challenges in the initial days or in getting married okay so but that doesn't mean the marriage ends in uh, divorce or a separation or your partner dies or something. Now, Mars in 7th is known as Manglik Dosha as we all know. But that's not the topic of today, Manglik Dosha. But what I'm saying here is when Mars and Saturn are conjunct. Now, if they're conjunct in transit, then what happens is 
check whichever house is mars is ruling check whichever house is saturn is ruling we can feel that our actions are not getting rewarded the way we want them to be rewarded should i repeat we may feel that we are not getting the results of those houses very fast so for example if suppose you are a aries ascendant okay <laughs> then your lagna lord your eighth lord your tenth lord and your eleventh lord yes they are conjunct yes and that and that too, this, this is happening in your ninth house i'll come to sagittarius later but let me explain the rulership of the houses oh yeah and uh, some of you said to me that oh why you say about leo ascendant why you say about virgo why you say about aries why don't you go systematically see i don't have the time to do that okay so i will explain what this conjunction is so you can check as per your ascendant whichever houses mars and saturn is ruling so if you do not know which signs mars rules i will tell you it is aries and scorpio and saturn rules capricorn and aquarius so number 1 number 8 number 10 number 11 if you don't know how to see the houses also then go to the first video of my astrology basics playlist in that i have explained how to see the houses okay so i will not have the time to go for each and every ascendant and explain what's going on yes that that uh, that is not required because i hope you are intelligent enough to figure it out yourself so just it's very simple just see whichever houses uh, both of them are ruling and then you judge accordingly okay so what can happen is suppose for aries ascendant yes so things pertaining to their health and 10th house their career these two are the most important houses of the uh, uh, chart because the first house and 10th house has, these two are very prominent houses right they are all in all actually so it can happen that you are trying to do something pertaining to your health or career yes or pertaining to money 11th house or 8th house maybe some transformation you are trying to bring upon yourself yes i know aries ascendants who are going through this time but uh, you may feel that you are not seeing the results you may feel that oh it's not happening the way i want it to happen or it's not happening as quick as fast as i want them to happen which is very true because mars says do this saturn says slow down <laughs> so saturn's tendencies it always delays you the results okay now suppose saturn is transiting in some house in your chart you will not feel that very much because when saturn transits that house you are naturally like okay anyways i have to work hard in this area that happens naturally you don't focus too much on getting quick results but the problem is when mars comes there you are like no i want to take action in this area yes suppose this is conjunction is happening in your 6th house suppose yes then what happens is you feel i need to take care of my health now only i will go to the gym now i will rock everything yes <laughs> but then what happens cancer ascendant especially because sagittarius is in your 6th house yes but then suddenly you go to the gym and you see that oh from one 10 days i am going but i am not having any weight loss yes why is it happening so that frustration can come inside you you are trying to do this it's not happening suppose it's happening in your 4th house yes then you may feel oh matters pertaining to my education or something to do with my mother or my home maybe you are trying to find a new home yes some virgo ascendant sign or one person he is trying to find a new home and it's somehow it's not happening yes it is so 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 true this conjunction because for virgo sagittarius is in the fourth house i guess if i'm right or i'm wrong no no i'm right i think okay so the, these these things can happen yes so whichever ascendant you are and whichever house sagittarius is in your chart so those things so now um, if saturn is ruling the 7th house yes suppose you are a cancer ascendant saturn rules the 7th house and it also rules the 8th house for leo also it rules the 7th house yes so then you may feel that oh things pertaining to your relationships or joint assets which is the 8th house assets of other people those things a- a- along with those houses which mars rules so for a leo if uh, if you are leo ascendant then mars also rules the 9th uh, house right yes so then you can feel that i am trying to become religious or spiritual but somehow there's this break <laughs> because see ninth lord is mars so you will want to become very aggressive pertaining to spirituality yes and especially this is uh, happening in your fifth house because for leo sagittarius is in the fifth 
Then you might feel, oh, ninth lord is in the fifth, so maybe you are starting to chant some mantras. Yes, I know one girl, Leo Ascended, she has just started chanting some mantras, but there's this struggle. My God, <laughs> why am I not getting the results? Yes. So the important thing to understand here is uh, the first thing is that we need to be patient. Okay. We need to be patient. Not because that Saturn is more powerful in Sagittarius. That's not the reason. But Saturn is Saturn after all. So see, what happens is Mars is like from our side. We are taking the initiatives. But ultimately Saturn is also there. So we have to be learned. We have to learn to be patient and persevere through those areas whichever Mars and Saturn is ruling in our chart. Okay. And if suppose you have a planet in Sagittarius in your birth chart. Suppose you have your sun moon or the ascendant or the ruler of the ascendant then this can be a bit more in intense yes because now innately that planet is also uh, getting influenced by that yes so if your venus is in sagittarius yes then you may feel that oh you are trying to do things pertaining to venus which is relationships or home luxury something but it's still not happening so the thing to understand is be patient it will happen okay because Mars will very soon move out uh, of Sagittarius. Very soon means not very soon, but it is going to move out. Okay. So once Mars moves out of Sagittarius, then we will feel some relief in that area. Yes. Now the thing is, this is happening in the sign of Sagittarius. Yes. Which is the sign of divine hope and enlightenment and all the things which are above the realm of our materialistic yes, consciousness. So... Now, what can happen in the, during this conjunction is because now, see, the sign also matters. Yes. So, this is not just a Mars-Saturn conjunction video which we are making. We are talking of Mars-Saturn in the sign of Sagittarius. So, this can mean that some strong belief system which we have. Yes. Because, see, Mula Nakshatra is there. I have already made videos on uh, Mula Nakshatra recently about Saturn's transit and mars also transiting there yes so if you have not watched it then please go and watch it okay i think i made it yes last week i made so it is there somewhere in the channel only very near so now what's happening is because mula nakshatra is there yes and mula nakshatra is what basically represents the galactic center of the universe yes from which all the higher dimensional frequencies descend Yes, and that's what I said and now I'm saying again, why Mula Nakshatra only comes in Sagittarius? Why not in the sign of Libra, Scorpio, Capricorn? Because Mula Nakshatra shows our foundations, our roots. So when we are trying to build our foundations, it means that it should be on the basis of spirituality because it is in Sagittarius, which is the ninth house. Yes, so it is intrinsically linked, connected and you can't separate both of them. Yes, Mula and Sagittarius, you can't separate. So, basically this means that now Saturn is in the nakshatra of Purvashada and Mars till 31st, I guess it is in Mula. So then, after that it is going into Purvashada where this conjunction becomes even more strong, yes. And then after some days Saturn is turning retrograde after 18 days because 18th April, I guess Saturn is turning retrograde. So, during the first 15 days of the month of April, we can feel that this conjunction is becoming too much intense and now what can happen is because these two were in Mula Nakshatra till 31st I mean Saturn already crossed Mula Mars is, is going to cross by 31st so when in April Mars also enters Purvashara which is the sign of hope which is in Nakshatra that signifies the hope of Sagittarius yes belief basically belief systems what we think is right what we think is wrong what we think we have achieved in life that is purvashara basically self-esteem and belief about our own self and belief on god so now what can happen is we might have taken some very stringent actions when especially planets like mars and saturn were transiting in mula nakshatra like saturn is transiting from last year october yes and mars entered some uh, days back so it can happen that now, when we were uh, having those transits of Mars and Saturn in Mula, we made so many grounding decisions. So many people I know, whichever houses Mars, Saturn ruled, yes, they had made so many grounding decisions. So, during that time, now it was a time that we become more hopeful because it entered Purva Shada. But it can happen that some of our efforts are being baffled. But that doesn't mean that it will not show results, okay? So, the remedy for this conjunction is very simple. We need to do our meditation properly. We need to stay grounded. 
keep our expectations limited to whichever houses Sagittarius is falling. Just see yourself. You know your ascendant. Yes, you know which lagna you are. Whichever house Sagittarius is falling, check that house. There's too much of, as in Hindi, they say, "Na tu tu mai mai going on." <laughs> so uh, there's a lot of uh, there's there's a lot of initiative and a lot of perseverance and tolerance which is going on there. So. Which is good in a way that will help you sustain things for a long time. Yes, because sometimes Mars can become too much rational. Yes, Mars can say, oh, "I want it now," means now, and Saturn can say, "Yeah, I will do it slowly within the course of a year." But now you are like, "No, no, I want to do it in a month." Yes, Mars is saying one week, Saturn is saying one year. So you are like, "No, one month." So this is a very good time that we uh, persevere and if this is happening in places like the first house or the sixth house it's great to uh, do some workout or hit the gym or do yoga or whatever you feel is good okay and then saturn will also turn retrograde about which the video which i have already made i guess and then mars will be crossing and going to capricorn for 4 5 6 months where it will be retrograde with ketu oh my god <laughs> okay so that is what i wanted to say that um, be very realistic in your assumptions in your expectations and don't expect quick results yes at the same time don't procrastinate and don't delay things that oh i will not do i'll do it later no do it but don't be concerned with getting the results immediately that may not happen all right and depends on what planet is there in your chart and if there are other malefics also na right, in the sign of sagittarius then this can become a bit too much more intense okay all right that is it from my side if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then before <laughs> mars and saturn gets conjunct in purva shada please subscribe okay and if you like this video click the thumbs up and share it with those who are interested in knowing and tell them to be patient to work hard and wait till jupiter gives the results because jupiter is the planet which is ruling sagittarius right okay so that is it from my side and tomorrow i'll be uploading the video on uh, transit of venus through the sign of aries because mercury is retrograde sun is in pisces yes mercury is also in pisces so one part has gone to aries the other two parts mercury and sun they are still in pisces so how that dynamics can play okay so we will see that video tomorrow okay until next time wish you good luck with the mars saturn transit all right bye bye see you Thank you.